Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Um, I'm guessing I see some familiar names in the in the attendee list. So thank you for coming back and joining us again. We are joined today um, with Angelo and Katerina from San Marzano Winery. Hello. Hello. Angelo is in the process of making pasta live. So yeah, it's it's a pretty impressive skill. Yeah, like Amelia says, quite mesmerizing. And uh, yeah, they're going to be telling us about San Marzano wines, Puglia wines, the native grape varieties, and then we'll be um, trying uh, three of their wines uh, tonight, the uh, Il Pumo Primitivo, the Il Pumo Negro Amaro, and then the beautiful uh, 62 Anniversario, which I love, uh, absolutely outstanding wine. Yeah, so uh, they're bringing the sunshine, they're bringing the pasture, and they're bringing a swimming pool. So that's what we've got on our webinar uh, tonight. Um, yeah, so for anyone that's not been here before, um, we've got a chat box. Uh, if you hover over your screen, you should be able to see the chat box and you can make comments in there. Hi, Dan. Evening. Um, yeah, so uh, put in there any comments. We'll read those as we go through. There's also a, a Q&A box. The chat um, kind of rolls through, so we don't always pick up on everything. So if there's a specific question that you have to ask, our wonderful um, winemakers then pop it in the Q&A box and we'll make sure that those questions get answered by the end of the session. Um, we can't see you or hear you, but you can see and hear us. Um, so use the chat box to have a little chat with us. Um, we, do, we are inviting you to open three bottles tonight, but we do request that you please drink responsibly. Um, please don't drink all three bottles tonight. Um, as always, you know, there are there are different things that um, that I recommend uh, in terms of uh, helping. We've got uh, Coravan, so I do. I've still got my ten percent discount code um, if you want to get hold of the Coravan, which I think some of you might have been uh, considering since joining these sessions. Um, and then on top of that, just a quick public announcement reminder. Um, it is Father's Day, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. Um, usually the pop-up wine bars that I host, um, I sell wine accessories, including the Antiox, which um, helps your wine last. It's like a bottle stopper that helps your wine last around a week. So that's amazing. So if you want to have a look at these gift sets, then pop on the website, princessandlapino.com. I'm also offering online tastings for £49 as a gift, um, but that excludes any wines. But yeah, so get in touch if, uh, if you're interested in any of those for Father's Day. So, um, yeah, Angelo and uh, Katerina, yeah. well, thank you for joining us from what sounds like a windy but beautifully warm evening. It is. Good evening, everyone. Angelo. Katerina. So tonight I'm, I'm making pasta, as Soma said, uh, because uh, we really, I mean, wine is all about, it's not just about the juice. Eh? Wine is always about the terroir, the food and everything. So I always, I mean, I, I traveled, I used to travel the world like uh, for, uh, for so long. And I, I always try to, to let people like, um, imagine where we live and where we make wine and how we combine the wine, how we like drink the wine with food and uh, and so probably like this uh, like uh, situation of the covid uh, made us um, gave us the opportunity to like to show like on video where we are because probably like this tasting i will do it uh, like there tonight and uh, invite like all the people but I'm lucky to be here in this place, like with this beautiful weather, making pasta by myself to have it tomorrow. So we can show our vineyard. Yeah, the vineyards tonight is, is dark, so we, we can show you. But uh, we really mm -hmm. hope that uh, we will take you through like what we really are and what we what what Puglia is, because it's uh, to me it's a, it's a beautiful region where we have like such a diversity thing from from wines to, to food, to people, to landscape, to culture. And so um, 
I, I really hope that we can guide you through an experience, not just a wine tasting, a normal wine tasting, but an experience of what the winery is and what the landscape and the terroir is all around. Okay, so please, like, uh, if you want to like uh, interact and make some question, it will be a little bit difficult because we don't see each other, but uh, we hope that we can answer to all your uh, things. So. As I so I was saying, I'm making pasta tonight. This is uh, orecchiette. It uh, literally means uh, little ears. So from the ear, uh, it's a very very typical pasta from uh, from Puglia, and it's a, a typical uh, Sunday little ears. Bravo. So it's a, it's a, um, a Sunday dish. Let's say where we make it with. Uh, uh, tomato sauce, tomato sauce with with meat, and of course a glass of uh, primitivo or negramaro. Usually we, you have a red on on the orecchiette. Okay. So San Marzano, it's uh, a winery located in the, in the Salento area in Puglia. Memory part my pasta shape. Great. So. Puglia, it's a very very long region. Eh? Don't you think? I've been to Puglia. So yes, but where is like. Uh, Imagine that it's bigger than Belgium. Imagine so when they when they say, "Okay, I'm from Belgium," it's like, "Okay, I'm from Puglia." We have the same sides anyway. So imagine that uh, it's a very long region from the north to the south. It's 550 kilometers long, so uh, more or less 300 miles. And from the north to the south, you have uh, such a different cl different climate. No, but different soil and different. Uh, production hills per hectare and so uh, be a little bit careful when you buy wine from Puglia you see you you need always to to see where it comes from so San Marzano is located in the middle of the Primitivo di Manduria DOC area okay so we have uh, five kilometers eight kilometers away Manduria Sava five kilometers away Sava maybe you never heard of it but is where Primitivo came from origin okay Sava is a very small town like San Marzano we we have like uh, 6,000 people living there and so it's called Primitivo di Manduria no not because uh, Manduria is a town not because it's from Manduria but because uh, in the area Manduria in Manduria there was the only station the only train station where the growers used to take the grapes okay to the station and uh, the guy was selling was writing Primitivo from Manduria. But the area of the Primitivo di Manduria is much larger. There is a, about 18 villages, part of the Primitivo di Manduria area. So, San Marzano was founded in 1962, between one nine, so 19 wine growers that got together because in the south of Italy, the property is very fragmented. Every, and I, I, I assure you, every family has got a little piece of vineyard. And so what uh, we needed to do is like, okay, because, because imagine if I have a, a son and a daughter, I will give, if I have uh, two hectares, I will give one hectare to my son and one hectare to my daughter. And then if they have, will have children, they will split that hectare. Eh? And so it's very fragmented, okay? And so we had uh, the need to, to be all together and create one one that could um, support it. Imagine that now we are 1,200 growers, and uh, it's a close number. And two, and two. Yeah, 1,500 hectares. So imagine it's average one hectare each, okay, of, of each family. So imagine that it's like every family taking care of the garden. Uh, <laughs> because it's like this, it's very small, the, the property. For this reason, San Marzano could achieve such a quality with uh, anyway, 1,500 hectares, because we have 1,000 people, 1,200 people managing 1,500 hectares, which is different from one person managing 1,500 hectares. It's a totally different approach. So now San Marzano is the leading uh, winery of all uh, Puglia and part of the south of Italy because uh, thanks to Caterina, we have achieved a, 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 a part of uh, 
let's say, uh, advanced knowledge in the, in the wine business that we are always leading the markets. We are always experimenting, making new wine, making new, um, new process into the wine oh, business. Okay. Yeah, since uh, 2000, let's say, we started this, uh, this approach. Okay, so tonight we're gonna taste three different wine, two of the main indigenous bay variety from Puglia, such as Primitivo and Negramaro. And I'm sure that Caterina, meanwhile I'm making the pasta, is gonna let you through very, very nicely. San Marzano produces uh, many red wines in a beautiful countryside. Uh, where the vines are sun kissed and the sea breezes blow uh, because uh, the area is a, a strict of land between to sea and the climb is temperate. Uh, the sun um, is uh, every every day is uh, is good is good and uh, is is windy. Very windy, yeah. Mm -hmm. As you see tonight, because uh, from one coast to another, so from the Adriatic coast, which is on the east side, and the Ionic coast, which is on the west side, there is uh, 55 kilometers more or less from one coast to another. So there is always the breeze and the wind coming through. So it's very dry, even if, when it rains. But the reason the production of uh, in Puglia is mainly organic. It's not certified organic, like it's mainly organic because we don't use a lot of chemicals in the, in the field because there is always wind drying the fields a lot. So we don't have muds and so on on the, on the field. Okay? Sorry, with, this, with this condition, we can produce ripe and fruity juice. Example of a fruity juice are uh, uh, the uh, Negramaro and uh, Primitivo of the brain uh, Fumo. 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 Do we have a as Fumo here? Shono, I, as as, shono, yeah, uh, while you go, I take one Fumo because Fumo is a, as shown, it's a is particular a Fumo, thing. It's a particular object. Uh, it's a decorative object that, that is on our uh, balcony. It's uh, a, a charm of uh, good luck, a symbol of good luck, uh, of abundance. Um, this is, uh, wow! It's, it's oh, wow. a copper shayak. Yeah, so it's a ceramic pasta. Where, uh, people used to put it in balconies and uh, went to like a nice bin and you will bring a fumo. Okay, oh, wow. it's a good luck, uh, fertility, and a uh, nice thing. So, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, and it's kind of like a garland, like what you'd imagine yeah. the room would wear. Yeah. Awesome. Good. The Puma collection uh, express with an aging, uh, aging is stainless steel, uh, the potential of the fruitness of the cleaning of the, our wine, uh, our style, and uh, as uh, aromatic uh, and uh, fruity. Uh, we have the Negro Amaro that uh, is a grape with uh, a long history that came uh, from the uh, from the near uh, Greece. Uh, so Negro Amaro literally means uh, in Puglia, right? Black uh, and bitter. Black and bitter, yes. uh, The the name suggests suggests the color, suggests the color that is uh, dark, black. Uh, with a reflection, a violet reflection, and uh, in um, in our land, we um, the Negramaro find a good terroir for the uh, right expression, and um, uh, is famous on in the mid uh, um, in the south part of the San Salento Peninsula. And uh, the harvest for the Negramaro starts uh, in the mid, uh, is optimum in the mid of September. Uh, this style is um, stainless steel. Uh, we, we make a cold maceration in a roto fermenter. 
uh, is stainless steel for the, the, ferment, the alcoholic fermentation lasts, lasts about uh, 10 days with selected yeast uh, at temperature uh, low for a red grape uh, because it's uh, around 25, 26 degrees. And oh. the aging is uh, stainless steel. I imagine that San Marzano is, uh, I don't, I mean, I don't call it like a normal wine because this crazy woman, don't, don't see her like that, eh? because she's a little bit, uh, now she's a little bit embarrassed, but mm -hmm. she's very crazy at the wine because uh, uh, we do the fermentation and uh, uh, the, the steaming and everything, always like in a different way from the others. And she said, okay, let's buy this, let's buy that. So fermentation in normal winery happens in a silos like that, okay? So in a, in a, in a vertical way. Where yeah. you, what, what you do is you take the juice from the bottom, put it to the up, pump it over. So there is the cup here with the, with the skin, break the cup and the skin is always in contact, always. There is the skin in contact with the mast, yeah? what uh, she does is like okay let's do it like that so in here you have the area of the skin in contact with the mast which is this if you put it like here you have all this area of the skin in contact with the mast. Okay. it is possible because we have uh, technologies uh, yeah. very uh, technology yeah. roto verificator in a horizontal way and those they proteates very very slowly and there is always skin contact with the mast for this reason we have uh, deep colors and more and more intensity like in concentration of fruit very good. and okay. also yeah and also the temperature is very important because uh, this crazy woman all the time uh, ferments reds in a quite low temperature temperature and also high temperature. So the extraction uh, the extraction of the color <laughs> but uh, uh, of the smell of the yeah. aroma too because imagine if you ferment like the same grape at 10 degrees and 30 degrees you will achieve totally different perfumes totally different body but from the same grape eh? so imagine how temperature plays the role in vinification. it's fundamental because normally the temperature of the ferment the alcoholic fermentation is very high around uh, 38 degree 40 but is dangerous because it's possible to enhance anomalous fermenting by bacteria is um, is damage uh, for uh, is dangerous for the the wine that uh, because the the wine um, is, is the must for us wines uh, have have to uh, be clean. Um, she doesn't clean like any defect into the wine. She's very. She's is a woman. She's is perfectionist. It's important. The nose is important. The, vin the vinification during the vinification is decided all the, all the future of the of the life of the wine. Yeah, it's very important. The first part. You know? In the first part. Yeah, also like we the have time a... of harvest for for example for the primitivo we have two uh, example uh, of of two time of harvest of primitivo uh, the, the the just ripe um, in the puma and the over ripe in the uh, 62 anniversary is an example. It's <laughs> for that that, for example, the Negramaro is um, a little bit uh, than the Primitivo because the characteristic uh, primary uh, of the Primitivo is uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 the sweetness, the yeah. roundness. Uh, and the Negramaro, the tannin is a little bit bitter than Primitivo. Yeah, the uh, there are full-bodied wine too, 
um, are soft and balanced. Have a long finish in the mouth. So, Negramaro in the past, not like Primitivo, Primitivo much less. In the past, Negramaro has been blended with uh, many grapes before. I don't know if you ever heard of uh, uh, Salice Salentino, for example. No, no. Salice Salentino is a blend where the, uh, which is uh, usually is 80% Negromaro and 20% Malvasiano. Mm -hmm. But Salice Salentino is a town where the ancient growers, they used to put eight lines of Negromaro and two lines of Malvasianera in the fields itself. And they started to mix it together because Negramaro had uh, like a stronger tannins. The Malvasianera was more uh, aromatic, uh, more soft, yeah? And so they started to mix it together. And so it became a DOC blend. It has to be at least 85% uh, Negromaro and 15% Malvasianera, okay? So it's a different history. The history of Primitivo is more uh, it's a bit, maybe it's more ancient, but uh, usually it's beneficated by itself because it's a strong wine and it's uh, yeah, more. Uh, and it's like more it. widely planted than Negro Amaro. Yeah, more primitivo planted than Negro Amaro. Yeah, because I primitivo went... is the main indigenous variety, it's a more, 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 more renomated, let's say. Yeah. Yeah, before I went to, because I went to Pudia a few years ago, and before I went, I knew Primitivo, but I hadn't yet tried Negro Amaro. And then when I went there, it was everywhere. Yeah, and well. Of course, I had to try it, and it's delicious. And I was just wondering, yeah, yeah. is it is it because it's usually in blends that we wouldn't know that it was Negro Amaro, but we've probably drunk it here? Or is it just not exported? Yeah, so you, you drank it there under the Salige Salentino, for sure, because in okay. the early no, maybe mid 90s Salice Salentino was very famous in UK and so you guys were drinking a lot of Salice Salentino then it declined as uh, every uh, things in life it has like um, Friends. Yeah. down and uh, and so yeah so it was very famous Salice Salentino before in um, UK it's coming back yeah I struggle to find in like when I went to Puglia it was very very hot it was okay. August um, and as much as I love Negro Amaro and, and Primitivo and, and all of and there were some very interesting rosés made sometimes it's harder to find like interesting white wines uh, because you never tried the white from Caterina <laughs> no really it's uh, San Marzano as I told you before I really don't like to call it a normal wine because they they try to really innovate and, and do different things. And in the last uh, four or five years, they have uh, really, really, really put their, uh, their uh, forces into producing excellent white wines. And we have one which is called Edda, which is dedicated. Edda means her, uh, like she. As a feminine, as a feminine presence. Oh, someone in our says, diet. "Oh yeah." Vivian says it's unbelievable. Oh yeah, there you go, there you go. So it's a wine that this crazy woman invented to, to create a new white wine from. If if you drink it like blind, yeah, you will yeah. never like you will never think that is a white wine from the south. What are the grapes? <laughs> Grape is. Mainly Chardonnay, it's variety from Puglia, and the bats are aromatic, such as uh, wild Muscatel, Passulara, you, which you might uh, have heard of it, uh, and some Fiano Minutolo. No, Fiano Minutolo. Fiano Minutolo is uh, very different from the Fiano di Avellino. It's a uh, Fiano part of the Muscat family. And so what they do is take it to the winery, dry in a appassimento room, the, the aromatic grape. Eh? A passimento room, 25 days, it loses 90-95% uh, of, the, of the water and then they freeze it like an ice vine. Oh wow! 
and then they blend it with the 70% of the Chardonnay that has been in Berlin. Wow, that sounds amazing. Really. It, was, it was a training uh, because uh, for us it is um, difficult uh, to work with uh, a white grape because uh, uh, for uh, for the example for the red uh, grape is um, is simple because uh, yes. we we have the it's not that she is good it's huh? just simple. <laughs> But uh, for the white wines, um, it's important the technologies that we have in yeah, wine. For, uh, for the example, the, um, the temperature, the temperature and the gas, the room for the dried, uh, the, the barrel, the barrique, uh, when we put the, um, some grape for the second part of the fermentation and then for the aging. Ah, it's good. It's a, a good training yeah. <laughs> to make a white wine. <laughs> but it's good uh, and uh, good results for the red wine that we have. Yeah, I mean, these... Uh, San these... Marzano is the, um, as a project. Uh, that is the create uh, a, a new wines with um, a respect with the tradition but with uh, uh, employ of uh, uh, technical, technical yeah, a lot of innovation we we really believe in the like um, technology that can help like uh, like us to but technology, don't you don't you think about not, not like anything. artificial thing mm. like temperature, temperature like uh, ima inert, image inert when, gas. Yeah, I... inert gas. When when we receive the grape, for example, uh, as Amelia said here in August when we start the harvest, it's forty degrees. We receive the grapes, 40 degrees. When we are starting the steaming, you have a risk of fermentation. And when you have the fermentation, when you are steaming the grapes, it's a danger. So what, what we do is like, there is a tube. So the steaming, there is a tube when there is the mast and the skin, which goes in here. And here that we have another tube with a very, very cold water and uh, glycol. Gly glycol. So by contact with this other tube, we drop the temperature down of uh, 15 degrees already, just by contact from one tube to another. And this helps them to preserve the integrity of the, of, the, of the aromas, the skin and everything. Don't start the fermentation and have in the end of the day, the wine that they and want. And then we can uh, enhance the fermentation with the selected DS. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the difference, uh, the difference with Primitivo and Negramaro of this range. Yeah, now we start. We go with the Primitivo. The Primitivo. Okay, that's the Primitivo. The difference is is not uh, in the uh, system of the vinification, but in the results. Because the results um, we can see on on this on primitivo the very fruitness the very the very aroma of the plum of the cherry uh, typical of the primitivo uh, you can you can smell the the aroma of uh, a plum plum. plum. You got it right. You know, plum. You, yeah. you feel it. Do you feel it? Yeah, definitely. Oh. Plums and cherries. And it is the same of the Negrama in for the Negramaro. We make uh, um, a, we we start the harvest uh, at in the first day uh, in the first days of September uh, when. Why so uh, the name it comes from primary because uh, that is the first grape that we harvest. 
sorry, the prime red grape variety to be harvested. It's not doesn't it's not called primitivo because it's the prime, sorry, because it's the primitive uh, grape, even if it's quite ancient, but because it's the first red grape variety to be harvested in our part of the world. Okay. Is a, a thermocontrolled maturation and the alcoholic fermentation lasts last, uh, uh, around um, 10 days at uh, 20, 25, 26 uh, degrees of the temperature. And it's uh, uh, a um, deep purple, uh, like Negamaro is. is uh, is menu color less 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 color than, less the, than the negramaro negramaro even if the the name is black and bitter the antogens that uh, that are the substance that leads the color to the wine are more present in the primitivo than in the negramaro even if the primitivo has a lighter skin than the negramaro negramaro is thicker skin yeah. than, the, than the primitivo so but the primitivo is the, has this uh, beautiful. I mean, when you come, if you want to harvest this year and come to pick up some grapes, uh, you are more than welcome. And if you crush it in your hands, you will uh, of the primitivo. You will get your your hands really, really, really black. Yeah, and for fine. days you will have mm. this on on your hands. I I remember because as I told you, like every family has got a little piece of vineyard. And every family does its own wine at home. So I, I remember doing it with my grandfather and uh, all the nephews and the cousins. Uh, it was like a feast for us, you know. All in the like in the house with in this um, like big um, uh, basca, you say it's like big tank. tank, okay. And all the nephews inside with our feet doing it, and our feet were like dark for uh, weeks, you know. But it was like beautiful this this uh, atmosphere yeah. And, uh, yeah it was a f it was like a feast so it's very very rich in antigens there which preserve your skin which is good, yeah, good and <laughs> yeah, but i think i think there's a spa now that you can go to and have a red wine bath so oh yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely yes. i i don't normally have wine at these um events because a it's it's lunchtime in Los Angeles and B is often hard to get hold of wine but we thought it was like quite fun if I did get hold of a Zinfandel the yep. kind of American sibling of the Primitiva grape and this is from Napa Valley and um, yeah I think California had 10% of production is Zinfandel mainly in Northern California and um, interesting I love both Primitivo, and then I really love, um, I particularly old vine Primitivo, and same with old vines Zinfandel. But I'd say, kind of like entry levels, I would say Primitivo versus like more entry levels um, Zinfandel, not necessarily from old vines. I would think the American one, that they both have a tendency to kind of be nice, but definitely I find the American style, like the Zinfandel, much more fruit forward. You don't have the tannin structure, you don't have the backbone of a Primitivo. Um, that, that for me would be like the main difference so I, if I was having them side by side. Um, yeah, and the, ty the type yeah. of oak probably that you... And the type of oak, and the, the grapes aren't, like the, the clusters are much bigger. So yeah. that you get like a lot of juice and you don't get as much contact with the skin and therefore the tannin structure and kind of like the, the aromas and things. But yeah, I think the oak as well, American oak would be... Because what oak do you tend to use? Uh, we use both like American and French. More, more French than American, for sure. Yeah. But probably, uh, I mean, the, the beauty of wine is this because uh, if you produce the same grape, because in anyway, Zinfandel and Primitivo are the same grapes. Because now, after the phylloxera, we have all American uh, incest now here. In, in, uh, yeah. And so uh, you produce the same grape, different parts of the world, you, you get a totally different wine. It's not like beer. Beer you can produce everywhere. everywhere. Uh, you, if you get the same open and the same ingredient, you will get the same beer. But uh, in wine, you have, um, even if you have the same grapes, same variety, you get a totally different wine because uh, 
in wine is different the terroir the, the soil and the temperature and the wind and the sea influence so that's the beauty of, of this world the condition of the of the terroir yeah. there are the uh, must be the same for the training of the primitivo or uh, the infantel a uh, little bit the same the, the soil you mean the soil i think uh, non del tutto no it's mm. not it's not the same because you are in another part of the world and another type of uh, thing so yeah that's the beauty of, of, of it i think of why and why we are so passionate about it because you you can discover so many things all around the world and uh, the I mean, olive imagine tree? It, the huh? olive, tree? olive tree i imagine like in italy we have more than 700 different uh, red grape varieties imagine that how crazy we are like because we like to Italians like to make people confused, you know. So we yeah. we like we say yeah. And so yeah. Should we pass to the sixty-two? Sixty-two. Yeah. Primitivo. There you go. The part of the really have to. <laughs> I've heard so have I? I've heard. Yeah, very heavy. yeah it's quite a heavy oh, bottle. It's, you just uh, look at the size uh, difference. Yeah, it is. <laughs> By different primitivo di Maduri adopted the reserve celebrates the year Samassano was established. 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 In 1962, by 19 local growers, and it expresses um, the power, all the power that uh, uh, and the richness uh, yeah. that uh, uh, this wine has. Uh, the particular, the particular aspect of this wine is that uh, comes from a singular vineyard, single vineyard from uh, founding father. Yeah, so imagine like this, this wine, I mean when the winery was founded in 1962, uh, these 91 growers, they had the vineyards one close to each other. Okay, so they say, okay, what should we do? Like, let's be together and found like the winery. And so, is the founders uh, vineyards and is the oldest vineyards of the area as well okay so it's uh, what we call like the best I, I i call this wine like the soul of the primitivo because really like very old vines bush vines so imagine they are all spread around and um, they produce like two tons per hectare imagine normal primitivo di manduria the regulation is eight to eight to nine tons per hectare and here they produce two tons per hectare so it's really concentrated one two bunches per vine more or less and there are still quite a few old bush vines in um puglia because the, they are now, I, I think originally they are quite a lot were grubbed up after the second world war but now people do really realize how special these bush vines are they are very i mean san marzano mm -hmm. With, uh, with Caterina and the president Francesco Cavallo, which is not here today, what they've done is, uh, because uh, it's not worth it to, to, to have uh, an old vine, for sure. So what the growers they were doing is they were explanting the, the old vines and they were planting new ones. Right. And so what they say is like, guys, wait, because uh, what we should do with these wines to make a very precious wine okay and so they started to convince to 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 keep it and we started to pay a lot of this kind of lens okay and so they had the uh, the feeling that they were doing like a good thing and so to to preserve this because it's it's history if they were explanting it is like we couldn't have this kind of grapes and this kind of white into the wine so it was very very important what they've done like 20 30 years ago from now yeah mm. the, someone said that they uh, they'd like to have a 
wine bath in this one. <laughs> I know that Jancis Robinson enjoyed it with black pudding and caramelized oh, apples. Nice. Yeah, this this wine you can well, of course you need uh, like uh, a quite strong flavor in your plate because it's uh, very full body. I really love it with the. Uh, I don't. Know, I know that is uh, quite unusual, but with Asian food like southern part of Asia, like Vietnam, or uh, with the very like spicy food. Okay. Yeah. If you put like uh, a lot of spiciness in here, you will get like beautiful flavor in your mouth. We've got a question um, here for you. And I, I haven't tried the Collezioni Cinquanta, but they want, okay, yeah. but Vivian's asking how they, how it compares to the 62. Okay, Collezioni Cinquanta is a blend of 50% Primitivo, Primitivo and 50% Negromaro. And it's a blend also of different vintages. So it's a non-vintage wine because we blend vintages of Primitivo and Negramaro all together. It started when we did the 50th anniversary of the winery, where we, we asked to our, like me at the time, uh, like a uh, uh, commercial guy. And uh, we said, okay, Katerina, we want to sell something all over the world uh, to celebrate our 50th anniversary, but don't make the usual wine, like, you know, Primitivo, blah, blah. And so she said, okay, I, I will do something. And um, she, we invented like a blend of the we two main want indigenous experimental uh, to uh, the two ways of the vinification and uh, a blend with the two most important of our wine Great. primitivo and negramaro and uh, blended for the occasion of the anniversary but and then we uh, kept going on uh, is it, is it the same style each year then because you've blended historical years so it, it will stay the same style like a champagne every year they they add one vintage and they remove the, the oldest vintage okay so slightly slowly evolving yes there you go have what trends have you noticed recently because you mentioned that salici salento was very popular a few years ago and then that trend went down what would you say now in the uk market or in the european market in general um has been appreciated from samanzano or puglia of course primitivo is the king mm -hmm. uh, i mean in uh, in uk they are still a little bit late on the primitivo yeah. uh, on the primitivo uh, yeah fashion thing because uh, Germany has started this already like 10 years ago. Okay, in Germany Primitivo is like, uh, if you don't have a Primitivo on, on the wine list, people will, will, will oh, wow. go outside the, the, the restaurant. It's not uh, like not having a Sangiovese from Toscany or, you know. So <clears throat> in, in, in UK they are starting, it's, uh, it's more and more people know about Primitivo and uh, the future of course is still uh, very early to say because of course Primitivo now is starting to be appreciated all over the world so I think we still have uh, 10 to 15 years ahead of, uh, of growth but uh, I think with this um, uh, a little bit of climate change and a little bit of new technology we are really doing big steps forward to very nice whites and, uh, and rosé. And how do you think Primitivo, uh, do you, I mean considering that it can grow so well in Puglia which I found out today comes from the word pluvia which means very little rain um, I guess these grapes are, are fairly drought resistant, hardy, and therefore climate change shouldn't shake up um, the vineyards in Puglia too greatly. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, they are quite resistant. Like imagine that Primitivo adapted in this land very well because it doesn't, have, doesn't need a lot of rain. Uh, so it doesn't need a lot of treatment because it's quite resistant. 
the only thing that we are facing and we can't do much about it it's about the um, hails because we have uh, mm-hmm. we are starting to have like quite big storms during summer uh, it's almost becoming like a quite tropical like months or less with this strong yeah, yeah the last yeah. years so this is the only thing that we are facing and uh, we don't know how to face it because it's uh, we can't do much about it but because of course we have a quite large area with this kind of uh, of uh, events we can prevent it because uh, hails when it happens it happens just in a very little area and doesn't happen maybe like 500 meters away or one kilometer away so in this sense we are quite like but yes as you said we we have a very strong grape variety that can stand out of uh, this climate change that is happening yes. we've had um we've had a question from karen um what is 11 filari like when should she drink it and what should she have with it it's a it's a sweet wine sweet wine um, because in in this wine uh, we make a vinification in advance. We harvest uh, the grapes when um, in, in advance of the status of ripening, and uh, we, we s- over mature the, the grapes. So it's a natural sweet. It's a natural sweet. So we don't add any don't sugar t- in a. In a but we let uh, um, dry the, um, the grapes in a room with yeah. ventilation with uh, a good temperature uh, for uh, two weeks uh, and then uh, we we make uh, the stemming and vinification is a long vinification for uh, 11 filari is a long vinification for the Santa Due too, because there um, these are uh, wine uh, uh, with very alcohol, and um, um, the the alcohol goes a level uh, when a level when the um, yeast can't um, can't uh, uh, live. It can and survive. Then, uh, what it happens because uh, when you receive like the, the 11 filari, 11 filari, when you receive a, a, a grape with a lot of uh, residual sugar on the on the grape, okay, uh, arrives at a certain point where the yeast, what they do is the sugar and the sugar becomes alcohol. At a certain point they become too big, you know, and they explode because they cannot uh, eat more. And so what it happens is that uh, uh, the sugar survives because you don't go to zero, but you have a residual sugar. So for this reason, it's a natural sweet because uh, the, the grapes are so mature that the yeast disappear because they have had enough sugar. So you have a certain level of alcohol and the sugar that survived made the, the, the wine sweet, natural sweet, if this makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's very, very good. Uh, we usually, in our tradition, we have it with the almond, um, almond uh, sweets. Okay? Almond, 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 yeah, al- almond, almond pastries. Oh. Biscuits. Okay. And, yeah. uh, but uh, I really love it because I've tried it in many parts of the world eh, with uh, very strong cheeses. It's almost like a, a, a substitute of port and on. but it's much better in my opinion because it's not the kind of sweetness that disturbs you you can have a glass quite easily it's we not a pasito yeah it's not a pasito where you have a glass it's like a sip is like oh, blah, too sugary because it, it has a very good acidity in the aftertaste so it's you can a... drink a glass uh, with pleasure with, with cheeses and, and pastries have um, two, two, two aspects of uh, these, these two wine, uh, the 11 and the 62, uh, are that um, meditation wine. 
there's this wine uh, have a texture, a complexity. Uh, there are not uh, only sweetness wines. Um, I've, I just also wanted to say, because people are mentioning other wines that they've um, that they've tried, I've also tried the Vindoro Negro Amaro, which is delicious as well. So if you're, guys, if you're liking the uh, Il Pumo Negro Amaro, then uh, splash out for the uh, Vindoro, that's really good as well. We've got another question from Yeah, Peter. the Vindoro is very similar to a 62 in terms of vinification, so imagine like the Pumo Primitivo and Pumo Negramaro on the same level and then the Vindoro you go on the level of the 62. Same sort of vinification, old vines and uh, very long aging in, in no. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't justify getting people to open four bottles tonight though. <laughs> um, yeah, we have a question from uh, Peter. He's saying that the Puglian wines that are normally sold or that he's come across in the UK tend to be darker than the two that we're trying today, the Primitivo and Negromaro Il Pumo. Is that because of the winemaking or is it just because other Italian makers are pushing other things to the UK market? Quello che ho detto è che questo signore che compra vari vini della Puglia dice che il Pumo Primitivo e il Pumo Negromaro sono meno colorati di altri vini pugliesi che ha comprato che sono molto più colorati. <laughs> perché se altri produttori fanno qualcos'altro oppure non mi risulta I, non so yeah, I, she, uh, she, I mean depends of course if you compare the 62 the deepness of the of the of the color of the 62 with the of the primitivo of il pumo of course you, you will notice a difference so it depends how you uh, which grape you use and the, and the age of the vines that you use, for sure. Because a, a younger vine, uh, you get like a lighter core and more drinkable because what Caterina wanted to do in the Puma range is to make a quite easy drinking wine, everyday wine where you combine the fruit, when you, where you combine the fruitness, the acidity, and it's a nice glass to, to have in the Puma range. For me, want, not yeah, the, mm. the because they, there are um, simply but complex the Puma range and very complex uh, with uh, uh, deep purple color uh, the um, the 62 range or uh, the other the yeah. Negramaro for example yeah, so it's to do with like the maceration yeah. as well, isn't it? It depends what you want to get from a wine. If you want to have it like a more pleasant, a more drinkable, let's say, wine where you want to have it every day, less body, but more fruitness and good acidity. And but you, I know the other producer. Yeah, it, it, she's quite, mm. uh, uh, she say, I, I know the other producer, it's very difficult to have like, uh, in, a, in that range of wine, the wine that is deeper in color, let's say. Mm -hmm. so. are, uh, are all wine of uh, south of Puglia and uh, our wine are very, very red, very complex. Yeah, how many points mm -hmm. of color does have the Puma? Uh, 10, 11. Uh, it's already 11 points of color, like in the range of things, which is a quite high point of color. Yeah, I think also possibly to do with your keeping the temperature cool that you talked about initially, that would slow down the extraction. Oh, yeah, of course, if you overcook the, the grapes, uh, you will get like a sweeter wine, more cooked, mm -hmm. more fat, but then you don't have an elegant wine. Yeah, and this is... You don't have like acidity. Yeah. Yeah, the acidity carries it really well. And I think, I think, um, like the UK are very, um, you know, receptive to those kind of more juicy Ribenery wines, like, you know, that we get from Australia as well in the hot countries. So um, I prefer the much more kind of elegant, complex um, wines. I think this is beautiful. Yeah, because sometimes, uh, I mean, every, every country has faced this trend of new world wine, you know, where they were overpowering the wine with uh, color and 
barrique, wood, 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 wood like chardonnays and uh, everything wood. Like if Caterina could do like uh, ten wines the same with the same barrique and uh, like over overwhelming the with uh, with wood, she will do like ten wines totally the same because wood you buy wood and you put wood in the, in the into the wine and you will look the same. I always say uh, the, the woods and the barrique has to be like the parmesan into the pasta. Has to give the touch <laughs> to exaltate all the flavor. I mean, you might like parmesan, you know, I like parmesan. You put too much parmesan, it might be good, but then you won't feel like the sauce and, uh, and everything which is inside or the chili sauce and then to everything or whatever. Like, it has to be a balance between everything to take all the flavor. Wine is made from grapes, so you should feel the fruit first, and then the barriques has to be something complementary to the wine. Yeah, use, use the oak as a seasoning. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Fabrizia said, I grew up with these wines, I'm from Toronto, and I drink them with everything. But what oh, is the... Fabrizia. <laughs> but what is the best food match for Primitivo? <laughs> the best food match for Primitivo, I would say, of course, meat. meat. Uh, lamb, I think, is yeah, lamb. I think is the best uh, meat that you could have with the Primitivo because it's very typical from here, and um, it's uh, the kind of meat that goes very well. But also, like first course, as uh, Katerina said, with the tomato, tomato sauce. Uh, but I, one person from from UK actually, there, there is a there is a, a very famous restaurant in Puglia, which is called Grotta Palazzese which is, this, um, is one of the most famous restaurants in the world and one of the most beautiful restaurants in the world. That, that doesn't mean that you eat very well. You eat well, but the, 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 the place is something unbelievable. It's in a cave uh, on, in the sea, in the sea. So you are in the cave and you have like all in the rocks and you have like the sea coming through. It's very beautiful. Look it up. It's in Polignano a Mare. It's called uh, Grotta Palazzese. And so he said, uh, and he tried the 62 there. It's like, uh, I had the best glass of 62 ever. And it was with um, spaghetti with lobster. You know, you know why? I, I realized why, why? Because lobster, it has a quite sweet taste with the, uh, with the tomato sauce and everything. So I think with the with the, with the um, 62, it, it was it, they, this cave even in summer is very cold also, like they give you blanket as well because it's quite humid and, and cold. Hello. 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 While they're on pause, if anyone else has got any questions, do pop them in the Q&A box and we'll make sure we get those answered. But yeah, I'm, I'm loving this, loving this lesson in Puglian history. Yeah, and culture and food and lucky charms. Yeah, yeah. Definitely going to be looking up the Il Pumo. I know, I'd much rather bring that round to someone's place in a pineapple. <laughs> Like that's that'd be way more fun and interesting to see how they respond. Oh, okay. I guess I'm gonna try and restart. Oh, uh, they're gonna try again. Yeah. I must admit, my nap is in. I I I'm I'm still getting wine envy. It's not quite the same from sixty year old bush vines from Puglia now. Yeah, these are good. They're. Like they're really light, they're like they're full of flavour, but they've got a lightness to them. So you know, it's kind of you expect like Primitivo to just be ribenery, but they're not at all. What were the prices again? Oh, can't remember. I think it's around. It's between eight to ten for the Il Pumo wines, and then the sixty-two is a lot higher. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, once again, we created a package, so I don't remember the exact like individual one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the 62 is pretty good. And like I said, the Vindoro Negro Mare is like, you know, how the Primitivo is, you know, stepping up big time to the 62. Right. For the Negro Mare, you step up big time to the Vindore. Um, yeah, and it's got a real bitterness to it. So I can't put my finger on the actual um, like tasting note, but it, it does have that kind of, you know, Angostura bitters kind of background to it. Um, oh, literally like the amargos and the bitters they serve at the end of Italian meals. Yeah. But again, Hello. Oh, 25 ish. Thank you so much, Peter. That's awesome. Thank you. Hey, guys, sorry. welcome back. <laughs> yes, sorry, but I don't know. We don't know what happened. We lost connection. Yeah, we sorry, lost the connection. <laughs> sorry. No problem. While you're gone, we've got a, a couple more questions come through. One is um, we've got Natalia says that she very much likes the roses, like the tallow. Um, is it hard to make rosé wines in a warm climate like Puglia? Actually, Puglia it's, was the first region in Italy uh, with uh, Lombardia to produce uh, rosé. Mm. So Puglia started rosé with Negramaro and Caterina invented the rosé from Primitivo. So we make a, a beautiful rosé from Primitivo, which is called Tramari. <coughs> And the beauty of Primitivo making rosé is that uh, when it's normally mature, Primitivo has 30% of the grape which is raisin and 70% which is normally mature. That's because uh, the same grape in, of Primitivo doesn't ripe on the same time. Because maybe in the late Ju June it ripes here and then in July here and then in August here. So the grape that started here in, uh, in June uh, will be more ripe, so will be raisins by by September. Okay, so 30% raisin, the 70% normal mature. So in the rosé, what she does is the opposite. So we started to pick it up earlier. So 70% is uh, normally mature, and 30% is not mature yet. So we get the the acidity from the 30% and the fruitness from the 70%. Of the and that must be wonderful with all of the local vegetarian dishes. Oh yeah, it is beautiful. That would be great. Yeah. And then um, we've got another question about the, <laughs> the 62 in the really big heavy bottle. Why is it in such a heavy bottle? Is it just to mark the occasion or is there some other reason? Of course, it's um, uh, one of the main thing is a marketing purpose because um, we started this like really early, like in the late 90s with this heavy bottle. And um, of course it preserves the, the wine better from the lighter bottle because of course the UV doesn't get through, but it's not one of the main thing. Of course, it's also marketing approach. It's like when you buy a bottle of perfume, imagine how much glass you have in that because you have a thick bottle for just a, a 30 centiliter of uh, perfume. It's perfume no. luxury, right? It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's our most prestigious wine and we wanted to give the most prestigious packaging. I occasionally, uh, I occasionally give um, tastings to, um, let's say wealthy, wealthy men. I don't know why women don't go to these events, but these wealthy ma uh, male events. And if I bring a bottle of this along, they're, they're all over it because they just love the heavy bottle. <laughs> Same thing with Napa Cabernet, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's a state. I mean, it, it's also represent like it's a heavy bottle for a quite full body wine. Uh, it represents also the wine that is inside, if you think about it. You know, it's, yeah. Yeah. I was just saying earlier, it's like, it's a bottle that you don't want to throw away once you've drunk. You want to keep it and put lights in it or a candle in the top or something. 
Um, do we have any more questions? I think that's it. Oh, Francesca was trying the Primitivo Rosé tonight. So uh, she's on a different wine, but still nice. a San Marzano oh, wine. Yeah, and she says it's, it's, it's dry, really nice style. And smells, smells sweet, but isn't sweet. Yeah, great stuff. Um, yeah, that's that's been amazing. I mean, uh, you know, apart from all of in the, in the meanwhile, in the meanwhile, I've done all the <laughs> I was just going to say, you know, as well as all of the amazing facts about the wine, I absolutely love that you've been making pasta through this session and my favourite pasta. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what are you going to serve that with? Oh, with just fresh tomato sauce. That's it. A little bit of cacio ricotta, which is a fresh ricotta cheese. That's it. And then a glass of tramari of the rosé goes very well with it. And the puma too. <laughs> Va bene. Thank you. Oh no, thank you guys so much. This was awesome. I really felt transported to Puglia again. Especially having that view. With you being outside <laughs> rather than inside has made a huge difference. We can yeah, hear it is. <laughs> Yeah, you can see the wind in your hair, the infinity <laughs> pool, yeah. Actually, it's just a picture. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you both so much. It's been absolutely wonderful. Oh, someone snuck in a question at the end. Oh, thank you. Lovely presentation from Chrissy and Robin. So that that's great. Um, thank you guys for, for joining us. Um, next week, we are going to Romania. Um, change of time to our usual slot. So normally we do 8.30 UK time, but we're going to be doing 6.30 UK time next week. Um, we're going to Romania um, to meet uh, Dr. Bala, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it yet, but of Bala Geza Wines. Um, and there are three great varieties that I can't pronounce. So we're going to have um, three other people. We're going to have Ben, we're going to have um, Geza Bala on there, and then Darius Prip on as well um, to help me pronounce those <laughs> great varieties. But um, yeah, if you go to the website, have a little look. Um, I've kind of put a little um, thing against the wines that the first one is like, if you like Roussan, you'll like this one. The second one, if you like Pinot Noir. The third one, if you like Shiraz. So if you like the sound of that, but a Romanian version of different grape varieties than those, then uh, go and give that a go. Um, we've got amazing um, trio for English Wine Week, uh, 25th of June um, with Stan Lake Park, which I'm really excited about. Then we're doing a very, like a more unusual one, which is Wines Unpacked. So we're gonna be looking at boxed wines, wines in cans and magnums and half bottles and having a chat about that. So a bit more um, of an unusual style of um, presentation. And then we're going over to Germany uh, for Oliver Zeta wines, which I adore. So yeah, check them out on the website, sign up to the newsletter if you want to be notified of those. And uh, yeah, thanks guys so much for um, telling us all about Puglia and your beautiful wines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Bye. much. Thank you. We, we wait for you in Puglia. Yes, yeah. with pasta. Oh, yeah, I do <laughs> have a question. Are your, are your doors open? Can we come and visit? Of course. Yeah, do we, does there, anyone on the webinar, can they come? Do we need to let you Of course. Or do you just Abs turn absolutely, absolutely, yes. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> See you guys. Take care. Why not, uh,